gentle marketers. Welcome to episode 30 of the Gentle Business Revolution podcast, the show where we talk about marketing your business by disrupting the current marketing paradigm. I'm Sarah Znakroche. I'm the host on this show, and you know that you're in the right place if you are a heart-centered entrepreneur or change maker who is looking for a different, a better way to market your business or you're an entrepreneur who is simply tired of the hypey traditional marketing model and are ready for a paradigm shift. You might also be a marketing impact pioneer, so someone working for an organization who does business for good. Real quick, if you want to be informed about the extra episodes I'm posting over the coming weeks, given the current corona crisis, Please subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast app. I'm not sharing them on social media or on my website to kind of maintain my own sanity during this time. Thank you. So on today's episode, I invited Mark Silver to the show. Today's episode falls under the P of pricing. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can download your one page marketing plan with the gentle marketing version of the seven P's of marketing at sarasanacroce.com forward slash one page, the number one page. So in today's episode, we talk about pricing and pricing is always quite an emotional topic because it involves our ego. In episode 13, so sarasanacroce.com forward slash GBR 13, I said that to me, fair pricing means that we don't overcharge nor undercharge. So we're being fair to both parties. And in this episode, I wanted to bring Mark Silver from Heart of Business to the show as in the circles of heart-centered entrepreneurs. I definitely say that he's uh, some kind of reference for the pay what you can pricing model or what he calls pay from the heart. So that's what we're talking about today. But let me give you some more info on Mark. Mark Silver is a master teacher in his Sufi spiritual lineage and is one of the pioneers in spirituality and small business doing this work since 1999. He and his company have worked with thousands of small business owners and self-employed practitioners over the last two decades. And he has a reputation in the industry of business development for deep integrity, grounded spiritual teaching, and nitty gritty detailed business development work. In this dysfunctional, painful economy and culture that we're living in, their central belief is that every act of business can be an act of love. So we talk about taking up space as entrepreneurs, his paying from the heart model, sustainable pricing, and much more. So here's my conversation with Mark Silver. Actually, one last thing. We recorded this pre-corona crisis, Uh, But I think it's even more relevant in this current economical context to show that every act of business can be an act of love. So here is Mark and I. Hi, Mark. So good to have you here. How are you today? I'm delighted. I'm really excited to dive into this with you. Oh, so yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Same here. It was so interesting. I've been following you um, and getting your emails and and newsletters. And I was like, okay, I'm putting you on my wish list for the podcast. And then you sent out this uh, email about the webinar uh, on a pay from the heart. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's a sign. I need to have you right now. I'm not going to wait any longer to reach out. So here we are. So yeah, as you, as I just told you offline, um, fair pricing is, uh, you know, a topic definitely uh, for for the gentle marketers who listen to this podcast, but it's also one of the modules in in my Gentle Marketing Revolution program. So it's something that we all, first of all, as business owners, we need to be good at it, at pricing, but then as gentle marketers or, or whoever you want to call yourself, it's it's something that where we kind of have this thing where we're like, yeah, we want obviously to be fair and we want to, you know, maybe have this model where we pay, have people pay from the heart. And at the same time, a lot of the entrepreneurs that I encounter, they're still in this mode of maybe, 
you know, just kind of getting set up. And, and so in a way, struggling with this idea yeah. of, of doing both and. Right. And it's got to work. It's got to work. Fair doesn't just mean fair for the client, right? Yeah. It's got to be fair for the business exactly. owner also. It's got to yeah. meet everybody's needs. Yeah. So, so what I heard you say on the webinar and what really resonated with me is this, this idea of it being a systems problem, right? Mm. Could you go into that a little bit and explain what you meant by that? Um, yeah. So <laughs> capitalism, dysfunctional capitalism 101. Um, mm -hmm. So there's, you know, our, um, the world order as it is currently in the global economy is mostly um, centered on uh, American style capitalism with, thank goodness, some restrictions, you know, it's like European, you know, the European Union has more restrictions, thank God, than the United States on some of this, but it's been, um, it's been really, uh, it's been a really kind of dangerous, unfettered system <laughs> whereby there's a lot of times personal responsibility is taken out um, in these global corporations. And over several hundred years, uh, the corporation that was originally invented to be a very limited term, um, limited lifespan protection for private individuals that were going to take on a public works project like building a road or a bridge, um, uh, took on a life of its own because of lobbying and money spent and gathered more and more power. And now we have a really dysfunctional economy, um, mm -hmm. a really dysfunctional marketplace. And the reason that I mention all of that, uh, you know, this very concise, brief, <laughs> leaving large swaths out history lesson, um, is that a lot of people have issues with business and have issues with money, people who have hearts and care um, about, uh, about having, you know, justice and fairness and love and, you know, human interactions. I, I don't want those of us that are in that position to, quote unquote, get over our issues around business. It's not a personal failing. When we, when we have a reaction around how business is done, it's because we're sensing something that's true. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is that don't turn away from it completely either, because business has always existed uh, in human societies, uh, human scale business. Um, and it's different than what we're encountering in what many call late stage capitalism right now. And um, I just want people to trust their hearts, but I also want them to lean into the discomfort to find a way that really works for them. We're in this strange place where capitalism, where the marketplace is really dysfunctional, something new is going to come because what is happening just can't last. Mm -hmm. And yet we're not there yet. And we still have to pay the mortgage. We still have to pay the rent. We still have to put food on the table and keep the lights on. And so we're in this funny place of walking between worlds, if you will. Um, and, uh, and so that's a lot of where the pay from the heart model came from is, you know, and, and I'm not the first person to take on especially many aspects of it. But it's, it's a big part of why we had shifted our business to this model entirely, um, because we were wanting to stand firmly in trying to create a new world and yet not, you know, I, I've got kids, you know, it's like we, we, need to, we need to still buy groceries. So Yeah, uh, yeah I love uh, so many things of what you just said. And it's true that this new world that we're all uh, visioning it doesn't just happen overnight. Uh, we need to somehow get there and, and the in between the worlds is kind of uncomfortable maybe, um, especially in the beginning, taking that first step and saying, no, I, mm -hmm. I want to, uh, you know, apply fair pricing. I don't want to um, use or, or kind of do what everybody else is doing and, and just only work for the money. Uh, it's uncomfortable because you just don't know. You've never used it before. So you do, it's, it's like every everything that is kind of 
unknown, it's always scary as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it can be for sure. Yeah. So, so take us kind of through your framework, um, what you call in your business, pay from the heart. Um, yeah. Do you want me to kind of describe the different parts of the model or what? what I, I what think you... because what, what people um, may not be a, like, I, I liked how you really explained it uh, in the webinar and, and maybe the point you could make is how it's different from the sliding scale model. And so mm. maybe you already start by saying, you know, this yeah. is the sliding scale model and how the pay right. from the heart is different. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so I, uh, yeah. And, and, um, thank you for that. The, the sliding, so sliding scale, I wrote an article years ago about avoiding the horror of the sliding scale. Um, and I've always been really dead set against sliding scales, um, that are missing some of the components that are in our pay from the heart model. And the reason for that is that, um, a lot of times what I see happening with sliding scales is people in business, uh, you know, heart-centered business owners who are uncomfortable with the pricing conversation say, well, I'm uncomfortable with the pricing conversation. I'm not really going to face it. I'm just going to, you know, and there's, there's also some, you know, really good hearted reasons for the sliding scale. It's not all coming from this place, but a lot of it, but I see a lot of it coming from this place of, Oh, I can't deal with this. Uh, you decide, <laughs> and it's <laughs> and kind of dumping their money stuff onto the customer, onto mm -hmm. the client, mm -hmm. and the client who also has money stuff because everyone in this culture has money stuff because the money is done so dysfunctionally. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't know what to do with it either, and and oftentimes they get so stuck that they just disappear. I've seen the dynamic where people who, you know, in the absence of a set price are so overwhelmed by the idea of having to set the price themselves. Oh my God, I want to give more, but I can't give enough. And am I not giving enough? And I can't do it. And that they just don't buy at all. They leave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you actually can lose customers this way. Or people just end up, well, you know, they, they, uh, the other end of this is like, they just kind of trust you. Oh, it really is a sliding scale. I can give whatever I want. And then they just give it, <laughs> which often is a very low amount. Mm -hmm. People say, Oh my God, all I got was the minimum. People were giving me almost nothing for the sliding scale. And so what pay from the heart does is it takes into account the needs of the client. It's a much more kind of robust um, explanation. It does take up some space because you have to describe it to people. What, one of the things that I um, uh, referred to in the webinar is uh, those of those who are um, working within a Buddhist lineage, which is not my lineage, but I have had clients and you know know a little bit about it. There's this con there's this concept of dana, which is um, where the monks and the folks who were running the temples in um, Buddhist uh, Japan, I believe, if I got my history correct, uh, would just, the villagers would just give what they could to the monks and the monks would just accept it. And there was no kind of set fee and the monks would then run it. But what's missing, what was present in that model that's missing from our culture is that the villagers knew what the monks needed. <laughs> they knew that, oh, the monks need such and such to be able to survive and be able to do well, and the winter's mm -hmm. coming, and they need this food, and they need, like, they knew what the going rate was, so to mm -hmm. speak. Um, and what's missing in our culture is that people don't have that sense. They don't have that sense. They're like, I don't know what to give. Do I give a dollar? Do I give five dollars? Do I give a hundred dollars? Do I give a thousand dollars? It's like, there's no there's, the, the, the cultural agreement is not there. The implicit um, understanding isn't there. And so pay from the heart, which is just another way of saying sliding scale, but in a little bit more robust sense, you need to take the time to explain what you mean, to explain what you mean. And that's really kind of the essence of our model is just being really honest about a few different parts of what's needed for the client, for the buy person buying to feel really comfortable and clear about their choice.
Right. Yeah. That, that last bit you said, um, so it, it's essentially could be called the same thing, except that you, with your model and you said it, I think once you take up more space. Mm -hmm. So maybe explain that even in more detail, because you, you're mentioning taking up more space, um, mm -hmm. kind of like on a web page, maybe explaining it more. But I feel that there's also just for the entrepreneur, that mm -hmm. term of taking up space, owning something. Right. Am I right about that? Yes, yes, uh, yes, exactly. A thousand times yes. I just, I, <sighs> you know, a lot of folks are taught, a lot of um, people in, at least here in the U.S., and I know that it's also a dynamic elsewhere in the Western world, um, you know, uh, especially women, especially people of color, are, you know, but all of, a lot of us are trained not to take up the space that we take up, you know, mm -hmm. shrink to become smaller. Oh, I don't, you know, the, we see this manifest in a lot of ways. We see this manifest in pricing. Oh, I, I don't want to take money. And so I don't want to hurt somebody else. We see it in uh, presentations. Oh, I don't really want to talk about what my offers are. I don't want to really take up space that way. We even can see that sometimes in postures where people will shrink down or their shoulders will collapse. And um, I don't want anyone to feel shamed about this. We've been taught this. This has been something that's been kind of put into us. But it does do us really good. It does our hearts good, does our businesses good to take a breath and to notice it and to start to take up the space that we're, we've been given. And to be unapologetic about it. We're not talking about puffing ourselves up and taking more space. Uh, you know, I, uh, that's another thing that I, I often talk to clients about is like, no, you don't have to be bigger than you are. You don't have to pretend that you, you know, that you're someone you're not. If you're newer in business, if you're early in business, if there's, you know, places where you feel tender, you don't have to pretend but you also don't want to lie in the other direction and take up less space mm -hmm. than is yours to take up. We do a whole exercise in one of our workshops and in our learning community around sovereignty, around taking up space and really owning your business, being the regent, you know, the steward of your business and saying, yeah, this is my realm and ah, I can relax into it. I don't have to be in a hurry. I don't have to try to squeeze what I'm saying or what I'm doing into some very small space. I can take up the space that it needs, that it's, that it's there for me. And that's a big part of this also. If you go on to one of our pages that describes, for instance, our upcoming Heart of Money course or our learning community or any of our other offers that list the pay from the heart, pricing you know it's not just a line item you know there's a whole description there uh you know that's several paragraphs long describing what we mean by pay from the heart and um and quite frankly i just i feel really good about taking up that space because i want people to be clear yeah you also talk about the importance of mentioning what other people charge and and what it's worth so on that page, right? Just to, mm -hmm. like you said before, people don't know what right. they're supposed to be paying. And, and so they feel almost bad uh, paying what they think it's worth. And then they're like, oh my God, what are they, you know, what is the, mm -hmm. the business owner going to think? And so in mm -hmm. the end, they just leave. So you actually help them through that decision yes. making process. Yeah. There's a few different pieces that I include in Pay from the Heart. So some of them have to do with, I get really clear on what are sustainable prices. Mm -hmm. And I actually give people a range. You know, I say, this is our minimum that we're asking for. And this is our sustainable price, you know, so that there's a, um, so that there's kind of a, a range of numbers because right. I, you know, it's like just to peg it on a single number doesn't, uh, feel right. You know, it doesn't give people room to breathe. I also talk about what are other similar offers. If there are other similar offers in the marketplace, you know, what do people charge? What's the range, you know, and I'll give the range, you know, and, and 
you say, I've seen offers like this priced for everywhere from this to this, you know, just so you know what, what the marketplace looks like. And, um, and then, and I will also be really clear about what it, what, what my invitation is around exceptions to the minimum, if people want to pay or need to pay less than the minimum. And um, I chose for our business, I chose to make the exception be what we call food the food and shelter exception. I don't base it on income because people are in all different kinds of economies. And so it doesn't um, take into account, you know, that someone, you know, in a, in an economy very different from the U S or even just Canada is, you know, like their rate yeah. of exchange with the U S dollar at this point, you know, in this moment in time is, you know, there's a 30% premium on that. It's like, That's true. and so there's a, you know, there's a difference there, but I, but there's also, um, when you have, when you base it on income, you don't, there's no, um, there's no way for people to really describe their own personal situation. Cause I've seen families of five living in, or families of four living in an expensive urban area, you know, have hardly any money to spare, you know, making 80 or $90,000. And I've seen a single person living in a, um, you know, a, a, a less, you know, a less expensive area doing quite well on 30 or 40,000, you know, and they can pay more <laughs> than the, you know, because it's like people, people, I just, the, all of this is really based on trusting the client. Mm -hmm. I really just trust our clients. I, I think that what I've seen in the world is that people really, by and large, really want to do good. They want to do the right thing. People want to, like, I never get emails saying, oh, you're overcharging us, or this is a ripoff. I always get emails saying, I wish I could give more. I want to pay more. When I start making more, I want to give more. And um, people want to give more. And so I really trust people to be able to state their own situation and to be able to name their own price if I give them the understanding. And so the exception about food and shelters, we say, if your food and shelter is at risk, um, if your food and shelter is at risk by paying our minimum, then please pay less. And we're really serious about that. We welcome you in. We want you to get the help. You know, if you're having, if it's going to be a problem to have food on the table or to be, you know, in your home, then pay less than the minimum. And that's kind of where we set the bar because I, I, you know, our minimum really is our minimum. Like I'm, I'm not, <laughs> you know, it's like when it's not um, an overpriced minimum based on what our expenses are and what our business needs. But um, I also know that people are really struggling and I don't want the karma of somebody going into big credit card debt or to put themselves in a risky situation survival wise to pay our price. So that's kind of how I, how we lay it out there for people. Yeah, it's beautiful. I think what really stands out here is this word trust. And, and I think like, if you look at some stats um, that I'm kind of uh, aware of right now because I, I, I recently looked at this is only 4% of people, and this is in the, in the U S trust marketers, right? And so sure. we are marketers as a business owner, uh, you, you are a marketer. And so that really means to me that you Mark are only talking to your ideal clients and you do that in such a way, in a, in a gentle way, that you only attract these ideal clients whom you then trust. Because, because if you would be talking to anybody and basically just chasing any kind of money, right? As long as there's money coming in, doesn't matter who it is, then obviously it seems to me that there is, it's very difficult to trust uh, your clients because they're not really your clients yet. They're potential clients at this stage. Right. You're right. 
Yeah, you know, I I basically just trust people. I trust people in general. And um and it's true, like people don't trust marketers and the reason for that is that marketing in its infancy it really helps to know history. <laughs> but marketing not, not in its infancy. What I mean is psychology in its infancy, in the late 1800s and early 1900s, um, as soon as psychology began to come uh, to show up as a field of study, uh, then uh, immediately, immediately, uh, companies began to hire these newly minted psychologists to help them manipulate people into purchasing more. Mm -hmm. There was all this understanding about the unconscious and about motivations. And that immediately went into, you know, New York City, Madison Avenue, the advert, you know, the, the big, the advertising got its start that way. Really? I mean, psychologically manipulative. So of course yeah. people don't trust it because at its essence, it's not trustworthy. Right. Um, in an industrial sense, in a larger sense. And so, and yet there have been trustworthy um, methods of being in business and being present in the marketplace. I mean, what is marketing? It's just being present in the marketplace. Think of a bazaar, you know, when people are out there, you're like, you're not, you're marketing if you're going to the market and you're out <laughs> <laughs> and present and talking to people, right? right. It's like, Connecting. there's always, right. And when people mm -hmm. know each other, like you have to have trust, you know, especially in smaller communities because you cheat somebody in a small community and you're done, you're done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody will come back to you. But um, so, so yeah, so there are really honest ways. Um, so how it. long have you been do, applying this model to your business? You've been in business for a long time, but. I have been, we've been in heart, heart of business has been going for 20 years. Wow. Um, and uh I mean, Heart of Business officially 2001, so it's more like 19, 18, 19 years, but I started doing it in 1999 um, prior to the birth of Heart of Business, and so literally 20 years. And so um, I started experimenting with Pay from the Heart uh, in the midst of a terrible, terrible launch where a course that had always sold well and always filled up was not filling up, was not enrolling. And I wasn't quite sure what to do. And normally I don't mess with the pricing. Normally it's something else. But because the course had always filled up before, um, I said, okay, well, maybe this time it is the price. And I started, I said, well, let's just try it. We can't lose. And, um, you know, it can't be any worse than it is now. I wonder what's going on. I asked people why people weren't enrolling, da, da, da. Anyway, this is, I burst the idea of pay from the heart, not burst it. I... I, that's not a fair way to say it because I learned from so many other people, Tad Hargrave from Marketing for Hippies and other people who like take had much more advanced models around sliding scale and connecting with people. Um, and I and we did it and it was astoundingly successful. Like we had so many people pour in and we did really well. And then I continued to experiment with it, not in the main part of our business, but in um, these smaller courses so that our main business wasn't at risk from our experimentation, something mm. I really recommend for clients. It's yeah. like, you got to experiment, but don't, if something in your business is working, don't risk that play with right. something else, yeah. you know? So we played with that for several years and really it got, it's like, this is really dependable. Like it really, really works the way that we have it set up. And so uh, over a year ago, last year ago, September, we switched our entire business model to pay from the heart. There's very little in our business that is a set price now. And, um, and it's been really wonderful. It's mm -hmm. really been wonderful on mm -hmm. so many levels. It's been financially successful. It's been, it's made enrollment easier. It's created a tremendous amount of goodwill in our clients. They're really happy to pass us on to their friends that there, there's no question of like oh can this person afford that can that person afford that they just pass our name on to folks right. and it's been really um it's been a blessing i don't know yeah. how else to say it. it's been a blessing. i love that testimony because that's exactly i think what we need to hear more is that 
it actually works, you know, it actually works financially. It works, I'm sure for you as the business owner, Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's, it's so much joy in there, right? Rather than just always, yeah, only focusing on the money you really find your business more joyful because yes, of course you also want to get paid and that's part of it, but you just said it, it's, it's like it works financially and it works for you as, as a, as a person. And the other thing you said is, I think is that's kind of a nice, um, way to encourage people to start small because again i I think you're right we shouldn't just say oh let me just you know change my whole business model and 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 try this oh my god please don't do that somebody did that and they didn't they weren't following all the steps that we had recommended and they did anyway they go oh my god i didn't make any money and i'm like oh no don't do that to yourself it was so it was so start small yeah yeah Yeah, that's what I have. I have one small offer right now where I have uh, a pay what you can. And, and, and I took notes because I I definitely think I need to uh, take up more space in terms of the, you know, explaining how this works, um, all of that. Uh, But really just right now what what makes my day is whenever i get a message from someone thanking me for that offer that's just like such a win so um i probably won't ever have my whole business model like that but i do like the idea of expanding and for example you talked about your membership model and i can see that working really well with something like that as well where it's like you know here's the different options and and, and then yeah. you know, let them. Decide. Well, you know, I mean, I mean, I use it even if, um, even in uh, my individual client work. You know, right. I just have the minimum set way higher. <laughs> you know, because yeah, because ta- you know, yeah, like, your time is definitely you know um, limited. So you want to make sure that um, whatever time you're uh, spending with the individual client is is at least paid at the minimum, and, and that right. yeah. Yeah, that makes so much sense. I really hope this inspired some of my listeners to start coming up with, you know, just one offer. Uh, It could be an ebook. It could be, yeah, just just one small offer that you start like that. Well, and, and, you know, and I will say that before going to the pay from the heart model, one of the things that I've seen that can be really important, especially for people that are newer in business or people that are feeling funny about the money and the pricing thing, Mm -hmm. is that the first step might be, I'm not saying it is, but it might be to actually settle on a price and feel really strongly about that Mm -hmm. and be really clear about what your price is. Because I don't want people using this as a way to buy, like I said in the beginning, to bypass facing issues around pricing, you know, like it was a really important part of my development as a business owner. You know, there was one point where I doubled the prices for my courses um, from a low price to a higher price. (laughs) And, um, and I had to walk through that and there was something about, you know, it's like, cause the price I was charging before, there was it just, it wasn't, this was years and years and years ago, probably, you know, like it's almost 20 years ago, I guess. And um, it just wasn't, going to sustain the business at that price right. and and so i want i guess i want to encourage people to to use this topic as a way to find out what is true for you in this moment around your relationship with pricing right. so that you can come into a healthier relationship with pricing knowing that that relationship will continue to evolve and change yeah i i think you're right, because oftentimes it's way deeper than just putting out a pay what you can or pay by the heart offer. And mm-hmm. and I know for the participants of my program, we really actually need to go back, way back, uh, and look at our money story and, and do some deep inner work to to then come to that place, like you said, to actually own your price and feel good about that price and be open to receive that price and and maybe you know maybe this is not the best model also for people who are just starting out uh right. i will say that as well like um if you're still in survival mo- mode and just trying to get you know 
your bills paid, then it's probably not a good time to to start uh, such a model or, or mm -hmm. at least, you know, just a very small offer. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, there's so much to talk about, about this money um, stuff and, and it's never easy, but it, it, it's definitely worth looking into. And, and what I realized as well is that uh, marketing and money in this idea of abundance actually has a lot in common, um, especially when I think about taking up space. Like I grew up thinking, oh, hum being humble is great, right? That's what you need to do. You need to be humble. So uh, humble in marketing, humble in money. <laughs> and so obviously if you come with that kind of thinking, then you're not taking up space. You're not... <laughs> Doing, doing all of that. So. Well, it, and it depends on how it's directed, right? Humi like as a spiritual teacher myself, humility is in the face of the divine. You know, when we face the divine and we find, face the oneness, the source of love, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean being collapsed. A lot of people think they're being humble and what's actually true is they're collapsed because humility is actually a tremendous position of strength right. if you're humble as your heart faces the source of love it can give you the strength and inspiration and um sense of justice and just strength i'm repeating myself in facing anything even your fears or other people's disapproval or what have you it's um Humility is one of the core pieces that we teach at Heart of Business because it brings such strength to the heart when it's a true humility and not a collapsed mm -hmm. sense of the self. I feel a part two about humility coming up. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. Thank you so much, Mark. I, yeah. I, yeah, I definitely think that could be another topic for, for a part two, but I want to thank you so much for, for your um, time here. And, and please do tell people, um, we'll, we'll link to that page, um, the webinar replay, if that's still available. Can I link Yeah, that? we're leaving it up. I'm going to redo it at some point because uh, it was the first time I taught it and I want to teach it, you know, uh, there, you know, the first time you do. Anyway, I'm apologizing for it. See, I don't need to apologize. It was no, a fine take webinar. Up the space. Go get it. <laughs> Go get it. <laughs> and, uh, and if we redo it, anybody who's gotten it will get the new version anyway. So Awesome. But yeah, that's so a we'll link to that. That's and then please do way. also mention your your um, ebook that we kind of talked about offline. Yeah. So I had written an ebook a couple of years ago called Don't Buy Now: How to Spot the Scammers and Avoid Spending Way Too Much on Business Coaching. Mm -hmm. um, precisely because my industry has been filled with such scammers, way overcharging for business coaching and business development programs, and um, there are some really there are a, a number, a large number of manipulative sales tactics that if you know them, they don't have power over you because you can spot them and go, oh, that's what they're doing. But if you don't know them, even very sharp and smart people can be taken in. Um, and so uh, there's no opt-in needed. It's a free ebook. Um, if you go to heartofbusiness.com slash don't buy now, all one word, D O N T. B U Y N O W. It redirects you to the blog post. Um, but it's something that I really want everyone who is looking for business development help to read, regardless of where they get the help, because you, you just, there's some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful business teachers out in the world. And there are some scammers that will leave you with nothing but a really big credit card debt. And it's hard to tell the difference. Yeah. Um, and so I talk about the manipulative sales techniques. I talk about what I consider to be ethical pricing in business development courses and programs uh, and business coaching. And I just, um, I, encur I encourage people to take a look at that. Wonderful. Yeah, I will definitely link to that. This has been such a pleasure. Thank you so much, Mark, for being here. And uh, I'll be in touch about this part two. <laughs> Yay, I'm <Thank> delighted. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. 
I truly hope that you enjoyed this conversation. If you're new to this show and haven't downloaded my one page gentle marketing mandala with the seven email prompts to help you on this journey to a gentler marketing paradigm, please go over to sarasanacroce.com forward slash one page, the number one page. I hope you'll join me on this journey to a kinder marketing paradigm. Please invite your friends to join us by sharing this podcast, this episode, or the Gentle Business Manifesto with them. Both can be found at thegentlebusinessrevolution.com. Let's be the change we want to see in the world.